This is the Wii Viewer. And the Little Wii Viewer. And we're going to review... Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. No, no, no. You got to say it right. <laughs> it's Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker. <laughs> Captain Toad like a pirate? No. He's a captain. What would we compare Captain Toad to? Would he be like Indiana Jones, a pirate, or a librarian? <laughs> what? I'm pretty sure he would just be a hoarder. A gold hoarder. He's like, I must have it all. I'll shove it all in my backpack. Mario's not much better. I mean, he's a coin collector. In Super Mario Bros. 2, he collects up to a million coins. So this one's actually a, what would you call it, a spin-off of a game from another game? It's basically the levels from Super Mario 3D World. Right. The one that everyone was like, oh my god, it's the greatest thing ever. We gotta make that into a real game. Actually, it was originally planned to be a real game, but let's not get into that right now. When would we get into it? In my Bayonetta review or something? Wait, what? No. Oh, it's just like in the middle of my Bayonetta review. Did you happen to know that Captain Toad was actually supposed to be? No, let's get into it now. It was originally supposed to be a game, and then when it was presented, it was like, what's this? And just brushed aside, but then they decided, you know what, let's put this in this game. And then eventually they just decided to make it into a full-blown game. So they put it in as kind of like a proof of concept sort of thing? Yep. I was listening in, I'm the little wee viewer, when this game was pitched to Miyamoto and the Nintendo company, they thought they were selling him real dioramas so like, because the levels were so small. And they were pitched as a Legend of Zelda game because they thought that Mario wouldn't be able to jump so it wouldn't fit in his universe. Miyamoto flipped the switch and they made it this. They didn't want to make it a full-blown game because they didn't know how it would be. So they put it in Mario World to test it. And since that test went fabulous, they decided to make it a full game. Isn't that what we basically said? No. No, you didn't. At all. You failed miserably. So the whole basic concept is you're a toad whose backpack is too full to jump. So all you could do is walk around. Why is this backpack so heavy? Seriously, what is in that backpack? Gold coins. Although you never see him put one in. They just kind of like morph their way in. But of course, it's the same thing goes with Mario. Where did all these coins go to? He's not, he's not got a very big a pockets. I would love to hear if like you're going through a level and all of a sudden you hear chinga 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 chinga. <laughs> all the like spare coins that are in his pocket. <laughs> Coop was like, I think Mario's coming. How do you know, boss? Ching, 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 <laughs> ching, ching. Oh, I think it's just a good guess. Focus! Okay, yeah, we gotta talk about the game. Enough goofing around. You go through these levels and you control the camera because there's different angles that you see the action on, and it's not always as straight a shot based on the camera angles. Basically, this is a puzzle, not platformer. You sometimes twist things around. You, you use the gamepad to move objects around on the screen sometimes. And then other times you have to just change the camera angle to find a better way to get past the situation. They were all very clever. It was pretty fun. And I loved how it was at a bargain price, too. Well, bargain for $40. That's still better than the 60 that they normally ask. So graphically, the game looks fantastic. You may not notice it just right away, but if you really look close, you can actually see some pretty cool details. Like on the Shy Guys, you can see that it's like individually stitched, and it's not actually just a texture, it's actually just full-blown textured all around. The one thing I wanted to ask about Shy Guys, and this has happened in the other Paper Mario games, so we all know the Shy Guys only exist in Mario's dreams. So does this game take place in Mario's dream? Blow in his mind! Boom! I wish I had a camera on him right now. He'd be like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. No, seriously, is this in Mario's dream? Um, I think they migrated out all out of his brain. <laughs> all of Luigi's dreams. Although to be fair, it wasn't really Mario's brain. It was the brain of swap texture of the original game Doki Doki Panic. Well, maybe Luigi was dreaming of them one time and then they fled. You're always blaming Luigi for everything. I mean, he was asleep and there was a portal out into the real world from his dreams once before. My God. It's the Rosetta Stone. It's Luigi's fault. The year of Luigi? Sorry, that's over now. Now we're the year of blaming Luigi. The level designs are quite different in each one, but they're all just take two to three minutes to beat. In fact, some of them can take up to one minute to beat. But you don't always want to beat it so fast because you want to collect the diamonds that are in each of the levels. You're going to want to collect the diamonds because some of the pages in the book that you're flipping through in order to get levels will be blocked off until you get a certain amount of the diamonds. And that was a clever idea to make you so you don't just speed through levels. Levels. By a certain amount, you mean quite a few, actually. Yeah, there's three in each level. So they're basically forcing you to just explore, which is fine. This is the kind of game that you're going to want to explore. So the levels themselves were pretty good. Um, they were pretty fun to play. 
there was some weird levels like when you're on a mine cart and you're firing at things. I thought that was kind of a lame level. Um, I really didn't find that the mine cart levels that bad. I liked how you can move the camera with the directional pad instead of just moving the, the game pad around. I thought that was much better than just doing that. I didn't think that the touch controls on the game pad were needed. Oh, look, I can turn it with my finger. Oh, I can move the kit things up and down. No, it kind of took me out of the game because I wanted to just watch the screen. I didn't want to have to look at the second screen. You don't need to look at the second screen. You, you're smart enough. You can actually just touch while looking at the TV. To me, it felt tacked on. How many levels are there in this game? There's over 70. How many do you need to actually beat the game? 17 levels, right? 17 uh, levels to beat the game. And you might be saying, oh no, that's the end of the first level. No, you get to credits after 17 levels. Well, it, to be fair, you get the credits after the last level too. Okay, fine. I know I'm spoiling it out to you, for you guys, but because you were the first to play this game. And I couldn't believe it. I came back in and I see credits rolling. I'm like, are you kidding me? And I'm like, look at the timer. I'm like, you put them in play for 55 minutes and you've already beat the game. And then we find out it's only the first book. They kind of cheapen out and then they make the story plot just flipped and now it's, you're the girl and then you have to rescue the boy. I thought that was dumb. But do you like the final world how you're playing as both of them trying to find each other? Yeah, but my whole point is, how about you actually come up with a storyline for the second book? As well as the three main story books, there's also a bonus book, which you get right away if you have saved it out of 3D World, which will allow you to play levels from that game as Captain Toad. Then you unlock more levels for it, lots of different types, as you do certain things. Did you like the bonus levels? Yeah, they're pretty cool. They mainly just put a cool spin to the existing levels. So, Little Italy viewer, Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker. Would you buy, rent, or skip? Buy, because it's a game, and it's fun, and there's a lot of things to do. There's a lot of replayability. And I agree with you. The game is a lot of fun, and there's a lot of replayability. There's no doubts about that. And for $40, that's reasonable. And I absolutely do think it's worth a buy. Well, thank you guys for watching our review of Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker. Why don't you check out my last review of Sonic Boom? Or you can go back to my classic review of New Super Mario Bros. U. Like always, thanks for watching and please subscribe.